Hello everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. We'll be importing CSV files into Blender and making some data-driven graphic design. So let's dive in. We'll use a brilliant add-on by Simon Broggy, showcased by CG Figures. Please see the relevant links in the description. It will save us time coding in Python. So install it, enable it and import your CSV file. My file represents municipalities in France with a latitude, longitude and population count. So it is important that you respect the different types of data according to what it is written in your CSV and the type of delimiter. And depending on the amount of data, it may take a shorter or longer time to load. And when it's loaded, we get a line of points, each point being one row of our CSV. So let's jump into geometry nodes to position them in space using named attribute nodes. So use the set position node and add a combined XYZ plugged into position as we want to position these points according to the latitude and longitude. So connect the name attribute nodes and X is longitude and Y is latitude. And then we will add a transform geometry node, scale it up a bit and use the translation parameters to bring it back to the origin point. So here we see the points there all spread according to their coordinates. And now let's put Paris in the middle. There we go. And now let's instance something on those points. So add the instance and points node and you can use any type of geometry but I'll just use an icosphere because it's convenient and I kind of quite like the look of it. And our icosphere will reflect the population size. So connect a new name attribute to scale and select the relevant attribute type and name. And now everything disappears, but that is because of the scale. As Blender works in meters and the biggest population number is a few million, our depth of field in viewport is clipping. We'll adjust that by changing the parameters in the viewport, but also by playing with the icosphere radius and using a few math nodes to divide the values until they are visible and legible. So let's do that. Let's add a math node and set it to divide. So we can see that we're getting something, but this is not enough. So let's duplicate that node and divide a few times. So now we can see that everything is inside Paris. So let's continue dividing until we have something that looks okay. There we have something that looks nice. So let's increase uh, the resolution of the icosphere to get round shapes and then set up your render parameters. I'm going with cycles for this one. And what we'll do next is that we want to color the bubbles individually. So um, let's have a look at the spreadsheet first. So we want to capture the attribute for the index number or the ID number of each point so that we can color them individually based on that ID number. It is important that your CSV file is set up accordingly before import. I order the data from the highest population count to the lowest so I can color the top 3, 5, 10 most populated locations in France individually and leave the rest the same color. So let's add the capture attribute and the ID nodes in the node tree 
just before the instance and points and now let's add the set material and the set shade smooth nodes and then we'll start shading there we go and now set up your viewport so you can see what's going on especially as you'll be uh, shading uh, uh, the cities one after the other and now let's create the various shaders a separate color for the top three cities and one for all the others so we'll have four shaders in all so that's city one let's set up city two let's go for blue for example then add another one for city three and one for all the other cities. Let's go for green. And now let's switch to render view and assign those materials. So now all the cities have the same pink color. We need to separate them based on their ID. And for that, we need to connect the capture attribute to the greater than math node. So what we'll do is tell Blender that all the IDs that are greater than this set ID value are to be shaded in this specific material. So let's search for the greater than math node. There we go. And then connect it to the new set material node and we'll choose city2 and then connect the whole flow but actually this is not working as we need to make all the instances individual with the realize instances node and now it works so let's continue the same process for the other shaders so duplicate the greater than set the new threshold according to the new index value and then plug it into selection select c3 and then plug it into the, the set shade smooth and continue for the other ones as well. And there you have it. This is it. Now you can play with all the other settings. Play with the world settings, set up the camera as well, play with the depth of field to achieve some really stunning results and uh, to preserve the scale in camera view because of course you are kind of visualizing data so you don't want the scale to be deformed by perspective so to preserve the scale in camera view switch to orthographic camera instead of the default perspective and play with the camera position and rotation and just uh, have fun with this this is really kind of your artistic input into how to present this data. So I hope that this was helpful and I really thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed doing it and I hope uh, that you'll come up with some really great renders with your own CSV files and data. Please don't hesitate to tag me on Instagram if you're willing to share it with me. I really look forward to seeing it all. Um, so thank you again and uh, at the very end of this video you'll have the whole node tree that you can just screenshot if you wish and um, yeah thank you and I'll see you soon bye